Mm. Okay, uh, yeah, I think it's recording. So uh, I want to welcome everybody for this uh, seminar of the Complex Systems Institute at Ghent University here in Belgium. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy to be here today because it's the first seminar of the year. Uh, and I hope this year will be full of activities, full of seminars. Uh, we still have some seminars online due to COVID, of course, uh, but uh, I, I really hope that soon we will be able to, to resume the offline meetings. Uh, and actually for the next meeting, I'm planning to, to book a room here at Ghent. So it will be online via Zoom, but uh, uh, I'm planning to have this room where we can go together and, and sit and have the questions there together and maybe meet each other and have some discussions. Uh, but in any case, it will still be uh, online, at least when we have these uh, international speakers. But anyways, uh, so welcome uh, again. And today we have Professor Fabiano Ribeiro from uh, Lavras Federal University in Brazil. Uh, he's an old friend. We studied basically together with uh, one year of difference. And he has been working in complex systems for quite some time. Uh, and he is going to give this very interesting uh, talk today about scaling laws in urban systems, the physics of cities. So Fabiano, the floor is yours. And um, I, I actually ask people to, to keep the questions to the end. So we will have some time for questions and for some discussions. Thanks everybody for being here. And yeah, it's with you now, Fabiano. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for a very nice presentation. And it's a pleasure to meet you to initiate this term of this uh, complex system seminars. And uh, it's an honor for me, actually. And uh, it's also a pleasure to, to have you here to, uh, to this very nice uh, invitation. Uh, Luis, uh, you and I uh, have a, a long history together. And uh, we also lived together for some of, a couple of months in Brazil. Uh, not only studied together, but we also lived together for maybe two or three months. And so it's a real pleasure to meet you, to be here, and especially for the, your very nice invitation to, to, to present a little bit about my, my research. And uh, thank you also for all the, the, the people, the, all the audience. And uh, I'll try to, to, to present to you today uh, the physics of city. That, that is a the title of my presentation, and I'd like to call the attention of the of the word physics. This here, you uh, you take two two meaning. First of all, the, the, the Greek meaning of uh, nature. The purpose here is to try to understand the nature of sea. This is the the first meaning of the word physics, and the, the second meaning here that I'll try to explore is that the, the physics has. Uh, uh, area of the knowledge. I'm a physicist, I'm past uh, uh, all my formation uh, studying physics and applying physics to physical phenomena. But uh, recently I've try I'm trying to apply the physics, the, the tools of physics to understand the nature of city. So that, I think that that is the, the reason uh, for why I, I chose this title, the physics of cities in the sense of nature of cities uh, to try to understand the nature of cities by the lens of, uh, of physics approach. And that is my collaborator. My network is composed by biologists, urbanists, uh, physicists, and also my graduate and undergraduate students. And uh, most of the result that I will present here is, um, uh, was done by this uh, team of collaborators. And well, we live today in a very special moment in the human history because for the first time, uh, the, 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 the human population, over, uh, the urban population overtakes the, the rural population. And the specialists believe that uh, in the next, uh, maybe uh, two or three dec decades, we, we will have maybe something around 70% of the people who live in the city. 
And uh, that is bringing a lot of advantage, a lot of things that is good. For example, you will increase the, the, the connection between the people you, uh, uh, with this connection, we will uh, establish a new, new health, new, new ideas, but also you have a, a lot of, of problem associated with uh, the densification of the city. So it's extremely important to try to understand uh, the city, uh, to try to avoid these problems that is associated with this densification. And one way to try to, to understand the city is to try to use a lot of, uh, of sensor that today is, a, is, a, is, a, is cheap and available throughout the city. And through this sensor, it is, it is interesting to collect data and from this data to try to identify some patterns in the urban phenomena. And by this pattern to try to, to, to build some public policy to, to increase the quality of the citizen that live in cities. And uh, also we have a lot of uh, software that can uh, be used with, this, uh, with those data. And by this software, we can, for example, see the cities has, has the biology, see the biological tissue, and then try to identify some patterns. Or I also try to understand the city and the, the spatial distribution patterns. For example, how the citizen is a spatial distrib distributed through the, the city, or, how, or how, how, uh, how the amenities, for example, bakeries, petrol station are distributed through the city. So, uh, as I, I told you at the beginning, I'm trying to understand the city by the lens of physics. And then that is the approach that I try to present here. Uh, that's a, a summary of the, the things that I will explore here. I try to present you some ideas about fractal cities, some ideas about scaling. And of course, I restrict to, to urban scaling, but I also try to present some ideas from the biology and some kind of uh, scaling in biology. And, and then at the end, I try to expose you some models uh, that have been developed for the community to understand the scaling phenomenon in the case of, uh, uh, of cities. Well, first, I, I, I'll begin this talk with try to explain about fractal cities. And the fractal is any object that has the same properties, no matter the scale that you, you observe. The object. Here you have an artificial fractal that is the Mandelbrot set. And the, the image here is approximately the same the image that you see from this object when you see in the microscopic level of this image. That is a, a qualitative characteristics of, uh, of a fractal. And here you also have a, a city, uh, two in fact, two cities in, in China. And uh, probably this uh, image here, here suggests that these cities here present some fractal, uh, fractal characters. But of course, it's just a qualitative analysis. We need a, a quantitative way to quantify or to, to prove or not if an object is or is not a fractal. And one, one method, a famous method that we use to, to see if an object is fractal or not, and even to try to determine the the fractal dimension of a given object is the box counted method. Uh, basically, the idea is that imagine that here you have a building up area of a city. Here is the map of uh, Lavras, the city that I, am live, I live. And uh, imagine that you can cover all this building up area of the city by squares, a square of specific size. Here you have many square. Every square here have the same size, okay? And of course, you have an, uh, a given number of square necessary to, to, to cover all the, the, the building, up, uh, building up area of the city. Of course, if you increase the size of this square, you decrease the number of square necessary to cover all the building up area, right? If you do that systematically for many uh, size of this square, uh, you have the number of square necessary to cover the, the building up area as a function of the size of this square. And here in this uh, graphic here, you have the, the, the data from the new work. 
And you can see here that you have the street line in this log log plot. And street line in log log plot is the signature of, um, of a scaling free phenomenon, or in fact, is a, a fractal. Fractal in the sense that you have the same property that repeat through this through the, the scales that you observe the, the object or, or any other things. And here you have this uh, character, you have this straight line that means that there is a number that preserved through the scale of the system. And this number is in fact the, the fractal dimension of this city, in this case here in New York. And the slope of this straight line is in fact the fractal dimension of the of the, this city, in this case here, 1.7 is the fractal dimension of New York. Well, uh, in fact, this uh, straight line in the log log plot can be observed in many cities through the world. Only to mention one work here, this uh, work, uh, this author presented many cities in China that have this straight line. Uh, that means that all these cities here have uh, uh, a fractal, characters is, is in fact fractal cities. And this low pulse again is related with the fractal dimension of the city. Well, uh, this uh, box counted fractal dimension is one, one way or one, one of the fractal dimension associated with the city. For example, here you have three, three different fractal dimensions uh, related of, of one particular city. You have this fractal dimension that I'm called here DF, that is the box counted method. Uh, uh, sorry, that is the fractal dimension associated with the box counted method. You have also, for example, the fractal dimension associated with the total length of this of the of the city, total street length of the city. And for example, R here is some kind of linear matrix, and the total length of the city is scaled with this uh, linear matrix according with this uh, fractal dimension. And also you have the fractal dimension associated with the spatial distribution of the population. In fact, here we have the N has a population as a function of a given uh, ratio, ratio uh, R, that's uh, also a linear matrix. And the way that N is scaled with this uh, linear matrix uh, uh, give us the fractal dimension associated with the population uh, distribution. And, uh, uh, for example, DF and D infra, that is the fractal dimension associated with the uh, box counted method. And this one, this, the fractal dimension associated with uh, uh, total length, total street length of the city. Uh, both of these quantities here is smaller than two, as is given by this histogram here that represents the number of city, uh, give a specific, specific value of this fractal dimension. Both of them are smaller than two, that is a um, consequence of the fact that this uh, structure here is embedded in the two-dimensional space, is, is embedded in the surface area of the sea, surface area of the earth that is restricted the, the object that we are measuring. But on the other hand, the fractal dimension associated with the population could be larger than two. Could be, for example, uh, 2.1, 2, 2 this in the case of some cities analyzed here. That, uh, that is because, uh, as the image that I have presented to you here, the population can live in building, in, in, in building. And of course, it, that means that the population invade the three-dimensional space. And so in some sense, this fractal dimension here could be larger than two, but this two other fractal dimension here is restricted to the uh, interval is, is smaller than two. And Recently, this uh, researcher here, Molinero and Turner, have presented some relation between two of this uh, fractal dimension. For example, uh, every point in a given color here represents one city. Here we have cities and uh, their respectively uh, fractal dimension associated with the population. And here we have the same cities, but uh, analyzing the fractal dimension associated with the total length of the street. And of course, these numbers are different according with the city, but interestingly is that the ratio between these two quantities, these two factor dimension, approach to a, a constant that is 0 0.86, has uh, the population size become larger. So that is an interesting result that we will explore 
uh, a little bit more in the last part of this presentation uh, when I introduced the scaling phenomenon. And, but not only um, object or spatial object can be called fractal. In fact, any verbal that have uh, a straight line in the log-log plot could be called fractal. That's the case, for example, of the GDP, the total uh, health of, the, of a particular city, for example. Here, every point represents one city from uh, US, that's the case of these blue dots, and from Brazil, that's the case of the green dots. And uh, you can see here that this straight line uh, fits very well the data from these two countries. And you have, a, once again, you have this straight line that means that the GDP is in fact a fractal uh, variable in some sense. And uh, one interesting thing here is that uh, this uh, quantity here, could, uh, this variable here can be represented by this formula here, this polar uh, formula. And beta, beta is uh, what I would call the fractal, sorry, uh, that will be called the scaling uh, exponent is uh, is uh, is greater than one in both of cases in both of cases of USA and Brazil. In fact, you can see that this number here, one point fifty, is stronger in some sense that you can observe approximately the same number, the same value, through very different uh, countries. And the fact that this number is uh, uh, greater than one means that when you increase the size of the population of the city. Uh, you also increase the GDP per capita. That means that uh, larger cities are richer. So you increase the population size, you increase the per capita uh, GDP of the population. And this fact is so robust that uh, uh, you can observe here the, the time evolution of the GDP as a function of N. Every point here represents one city, one city from the San Suarez of Brazil. And beside the chaotic movement of an individual city, you can see here that the straight line that represents the, the scaling of the country, of or not country here, only the state of software of Brazil, but the, the scaling of these uh, systems of cities, this scale uh, is maintained constant, approximately constant. So the slope of the straight line maintain constant. Beside, the chaotic movement of the individual growth. That show us that the, this uh, scaling property is strong through the time. And uh, most of the community, most of the, the research from the community believes that uh, this uh, uh, scaling that uh, I present to you is a consequence of the number of contacts that the people have uh, that increase with the size, the per capita number of encounters increase with the population size. That means that uh, larger cities have a more, people have more contents. That is what suggests this work from Bittencourt that uh, he and his colleagues shows that uh, in fact, when you plot the number of contacts has a function of N, you have a, a beta that is the scale exponent uh, larger than one. In fact, here, uh, I scale exponents that approximately the same value that uh, the value that you have uh, observed that you observed in the case of GDP. And on the other hand, you have other kinds of uh, variables usually associated with infrastructure that pre also present the scaling properties, also present this uh, straight line in log log plot. However, the value of the beta is smaller than one. In fact, the uh, this value here, beta around 0.85, can be observed for many countries for many different, uh, many different uh, infrastructure variables. And the fact that this number here is smaller than one means that you have uh, infra um, uh, scale, economy, scale economy of the infrastructure. That means that when you increase the size of the population of the city, you also decrease the per capita infrastructure. That means that you have a scaling economy in the case of uh, uh, infrastructure variables. And uh, in fact, you can divide the, the, the urban variables in three categories. Uh, the, first of, uh, 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 the first category is the, 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 the variables associated with infrastructure. That here you have the air of the city, 
the total length of the, of the city, number of uh, petrol station, for example, uh, that is the first category. The second category is the, the variables associated with individual units. That is the case that you have beta uh, approximately one. That means that you have a, a linear dependence of these variables and the, and the population size. Uh, sorry, I have forgot to, to tell that this first category have beta smaller than one. That means that here you have the scaling economy in the case of infrastructure variable. And finally, we have the third category that uh, is, uh, is associated with, uh, that are variables associated with some kind of socioeconomic output. That's the case of GDP or number of contacts or also some uh, infective disease that, it, that is also uh, some kind of, of uh, socioeconomic or social, in fact, social uh, variable. And in this uh, uh, paper here that I have um, developed with my friends, uh, we also identified a fourth kind of variable, a fourth category of variables. That is the case of some variables that uh, beside to be infrastructure kind of variable has the case of hospital beds, you have a, a super, super, super linear behavior. You have a beta that is, that is greater than one. And the, the hypothesis that we have uh, present is that this variable, besides to be infrastructure kind of variable, uh, also depends strongly with the, some kind of public policy. That, is, uh, that means that the greater city have more health and more money to invest. And then beside, we expect to be a uh, sublinear kind of uh, variable. In fact, we observe in the data a superlinear kind of variable as a consequence of public policy, or some kind of top-down interfering of the, of the government in this kind of variable. Well, when the, I see city, you, you are talking about village that have some, uh, some kind of hunger of people, but also you're talking about uh, metropolis has Tokyo, Yokohama, that is the greatest metropolis in the world. So if you compare the different in magnitude of these uh, different cities, village and metropoli, uh, you observe something like five or six order of magnitude that come from this valor to this big valor here, you cover something around five or six order of magnitude. Interestingly, when you see, for example, biology, uh, biology has something around 21 orders of magnitude. That is, a, is amazing, it's a, it's a much, uh, much, much bigger uh, orders of magnitude if compare, in comparison to the to cities. Only to have an idea, only the mammals cover something around eight orders of magnitude. So, so just the mammals cover more orders of magnitude that, that uh, the, the cities that we have. So of course, it's interesting to take a look at the biological system and try to see what kind of uh, scaling that you can observe in this system. And then to try to see if it's possible or not to establish some kind of analogies between uh, biological system and urban system. Here, I, I, I bring to you uh, a very famous uh, scaling in biology, that is the metabolic heat has a function of the mass. Metabolic heat is the total energy that uh, the organism is spent to maintain alive. Okay, and you can see here that this formula, that's this power law equation here that relate the, the, the metabolic heat has a function of the, of the mass of the organism, erase it to this exponent, uh, is uh, work very well to the, these groups of organisms of course, you have difference in the values of the parameters uh, through these taxonomic groups. For example, when you see the prokaryotes, you have beta that is greater than one. You have a su super linear behavior between metabolic rate and mass. When you see the protist, you have a linear behavior of the metabolic rate and mass. And then on this, kind of arguments here that is a, the poculoterms and omeoterms kind of variables. And most important is the vascular 
systems. In this kind of uh, organisms, you have a sublinear behavior in the same way that you have in the case of infrastructure in CD. Okay, so for, for, for our purpose here, purpose of comparison, what is interesting for us is this kind of uh, organisms that's, uh, that are organisms that have a vascular system. That means that you have uh, that are organisms that have circulatory systems. And in this case, you have a beta something around three quarter. That is so called the three quarter law of the vascular organisms. And um, uh, the fact that in vascular organisms have uh, a beta is smaller than one, than one means that you also you, you have um, a scaling economy. In the case of biology, that means that when the, oh, sorry. In the case, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, not, not, not it's fine. Uh, in the case of biology means that when you increase the size of the organism, you also decrease the energy spent per capita or per cell. In the same way that in the case of uh, city, when you increase the population size, you also decrease the per capita infrastructure. So in some sense, you have uh, 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 qualitatively, you have uh, a good agreement between biological system and urban system, uh, both because you have a beta, the scaling exponent is smaller than one. Uh, in the case of biology, we have a very no theory to explain this uh, three quarter law. Uh, and this uh, theory says that when you conceive that the fractal, distrib the fractal distrib uh, sorry, the network distribution of the nutrients is uh, in fact a fractal object, that's the first assumption. The, the second assumption is that you have a terminal unit, that means that uh, uh, cell or other any other uh, capillary uh, verbal do not vary with the size of the organisms. That means that all the the, the things that relate with the capillaries have uh, are independent of the have size that is independent of this, the total size of the organisms. That's the second assumption. And finally, you have the third assumption that uh, is the natural selection and the minimization of energy. Then when you consider this three assumption, what emerged from the calculus is that this three quarter um, value for the, the, the scanning exponent. Uh, when I, I take a look at this image here, only to compare, on the right, you have uh, the, the veins or, or the network distribution of nutrients of the human body, you see here some kind of hierarchical property. That's the first assumption of the of uh, West et al. Uh, theory. That means that you have a large veins that is the aorta, that uh, this vein divide in many others uh, many others veins until you come up with the capillarities. That is some kind of hierarchical uh, distribution of nutrients. Uh, when I take a look of the subway lines in Berlin, in Berlin here, that means that you have a station in the downtown that is larger. And then uh, as you go to the peripheral parts of the city, uh, the size of this uh, station becomes smaller and smaller. That means that you also have some kind of hierarchical process here in the case of uh, sub, 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 subway lines. So qualitatively, that means or suggests that these two systems here is the same, but only qualitatively, because when I take a look quantitatively, you have a, a, a difference between these two systems. Both of them, cities and biology, are well descri described by this uh, equation, this power law equation. Uh, however, the exponent, uh, in the case of biology, you have a three-quarter exponent, but in the case of CD, you have a 0.85 exponent. That means that when you increase the size of CD, you decrease in 50% the infrastructure demand, approximately 50%, not as precise this number here. In fact, this work only for a small increase in size, but for our comparison, that is a, is a interesting way to analyze that. That means, so I'm saying that you have 50% of economy of scale in the case of city when you increase the size of the city. 
However, in the case, in the case of biology, when you increase the size of the organism, you have an increase of, of 25%. That is, means that quantitatively, you have a, a, a difference between cities and biology. In fact, biology is, 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 is more efficient than in the cities. That cities. Well, while in the biology, we have a, a very important theory, a very important general theory to describe the biological organisms. In the case of cities, in fact, you have a lot of model and there's no consensus at all to, to connect all this, uh, this model. Here in this uh, work that I and my colleague, Diego Hybis have presented in this uh, archive paper here, we try to organize the model that uh, try to explain the urban scale. You have model that consider, for example, some uh, internal process uh, that happen inside the city. You have model that also try to, to connect uh, or to try to, to, to see how the connection between different city affects the urban scaling. You have also others kind of models that consider the interaction between the people the geometry of the of the city and something like that. Every model here, every work here, try to explain urban scaling in a very very specific kind of verbal. That is the 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 problem that we have uh, nowadays about this model. You, you don't have a general idea. You don't have a general approach to explain the urban scaling as a as a whole. Only only that you have is uh, uh, our models that try to understand in a very specific um, kind of variables in the case of uh, urban scale. And the, the, the last part of my presentation, I would like to dedicate for one of, the, of this model that try to explain the urban scale in the case of uh, uh, based on the, the interaction between the people. The, the idea, the main idea behind it is that suppose that you have two individuals, I and J, and they are separate one from each other by this distance R, okay? And suppose that you have a probability of these two guys to interact. And this prob probability depends on the distance according of this formula here, okay? That is a power law equation that says that when you increase the distance between them, you decrease the probability of these two guys to interact. And gamma here is a parameter of the model that measures the range of interaction between these two guys. For example, when you have gamma uh, very large, that means that the probability of interaction is small. That means that you have uh, only individuals that interact with nearby uh, other individual, individual. And uh, when gamma is uh, small, that means that you have a long range, long, long way kind of interaction, long, long range kind of interaction. And the other premise of this model is that the connection, the number of connection implies the socioeconomic production. That's the main, the main point here. You have the probability of interaction and uh, given that you have interaction, you have connection, uh, that implies in a socioeconomic production. That's the main idea of the, of the model. Uh, this formula here, or hypothesis, uh, is strongly supported by some empirical data. For example, we have, we have here the, the distribution of email has a function of distance. You can see that a good agreement with uh, empirical evidence in the, this uh, parallel equation. And also the distribution of uh, Facebook contacts as a function of the distance also have a, a good agreement between data and, uh, and this equation here. And recently we have a, a also a very interesting result here that was published in Nature by these uh, authors here that uh, using a, uh, a huge amount of data from mobile phones and quantifying the trajectory of the people through the city, they identify that in fact, the probability or the density of people that visit some place that are adjacent are depend by this formula, but uh, these uh, authors also should suggest or they verified that uh, have another ingredient in this formula that is the frequency of time that uh, you visit the place. So that means that the number of times that you, 
you visit some place depend of the distance r, but also depend of the frequency of time that you visit this place. So uh, to sum up, this formula also uh, is uh, some way of support for this uh, uh, hypothesis that the, the distance, how the distance affect the number of times that the people interact with the city. Uh, then uh, the model that uh, using this idea, uh, uh, I can compute the number of uh, contacts and consequences of the socioeconomic production. And uh, for example, imagine that you have the population distrib distributed through um, a structure that have a fractal dimension. So you have here, whole has a density of people and this whole uh, give us the fractal structure of the city. And P here is the probability of interaction that decay with the distance. And when you solve this integral here, that means that you, you are counting the total number of contacts that one single people have. Then when we multiply by N, you have the socioeconomic production of the city. And uh, what emerged from this calculus here is that when you have gamma sufficiently large, and large here means that the gamma must be greater than the fractal dimension of the population, then you have a, some kind of short range kind of interaction. That means that the, the people interact only with the nearby individuals. But in this case, you have a linear behavior between the socioeconomic production and the population size. And that is not what we have observed in the case of empirical evidence. In fact, what you observe is a, is a scaling property between socioeconomic production and the population size. And that is precisely what we can observe when, you con when uh, we consider gamma is smaller than the given value. Here in the case is smaller than the fractal dimension. That is precisely the case of long range kind of interaction. So when you consider that the people can interact from other, uh, with other individuals that live in different uh, parts of the city. So uh, in a long, um, in the very distant part of the city. So that is the case that you have a scaling between socioeconomic production and population size. And one more interesting result that uh, we have here is that we can, by this model, write this scaling exponent has a function of the geometrical, um, geometrical properties of the model, has the gamma, that is the, the range of interaction between the people, and also the fractal dimension of the spatial distribution of the population through the space, yeah? the, uh, the space distribution of the population. Well, uh, what I'd like to call attention here is the fact that uh, to, to have a socioeconomic production in a super linear kind of way, uh, you must have a long range kind of interaction. That means that the model predicts that in order to have a, a, a scaling property, you must interact all the part of the city, all different parts of the city. And that is precisely what happened in the case of Madeline in Colombia. Uh, here you have a cable car that after the introduction of this cable car that connected uh, previous previously isolated part of the city, you increase it, the socioeconomic index of this uh, city. That means that when you integrate different parts of the city, you increase the socioeconomic of this uh, city, in the case Medellin. And that is precisely what your model predicts. You, when you uh, allow the people to interact from diff for, uh, with different parts of the city, you also increase the, the scaling, you also increase the, the socioeconomic production of the city. Uh, on the other hand, you have, uh, by uh, this model also, you have, uh, you can use the same idea to compute, for example, the, the infrastructure of the city, specifically the number of amenities. Suppose that you are interested to see how the number of baker or how the name of petrol station scales the population size. And the idea is that now you have R that measures the distance between one individual, I, and uh, one amenity or one bakery, K, okay? And R, F here represents, for example, the total amount of product consumed by I in this bakery, K, or in this petrol station, K. And uh, suppose that you have this formula here to, 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 to model 
this uh, quantity here, here you have the same, the same equation that I used in the previous slides. And using that, we can compute, for example, the total um, uh, amount of product that this individual consumed in all the baker or all the petrol station of the city. If I sum that, you can compute, for example, the total amount of this, quant this, uh, uh, this product was consumed by this individual, by all the individuals of, this, of the city. And if I consider that this uh, product is uh, some kind of individual need product, it must scale with n. Then when I put this information, to get information together with this and other assumptions, what emerged is that in fact, I can uh, compute beta as a function of gamma and the, the fractal means the, 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 the ratio between these two quantities quanti again. But now we have, uh, uh, as gamma is uh, represented some, ki some kind of long range kind of interaction, this value here, you'll be smaller than one. That means that you, you have a scaling economy in the case of infrastructure of the, of the urban variables. And here we have an um, agent-based model to simulate this idea. Suppose that uh, this dot here represented uh, uh, the population and the triangle, the right triangle represented some amenity, for example, one baker or some, or some uh, better station. And uh, if you establish uh, the, the dynamic described by the, the previous slide here, you can put the, the facility to, to, to evolve. If you wait enough, you can observe an equilibrium number of uh, facility. For example, by this graph here, you can see the evolution and then this, the, the, the converge of this number for a given value and then if you increase the size of this is, of course, this number here also increase and you can measure, for example, the, the total number in the equilibrium, total number of amenities at the equilibrium as a function of n, you can, you can see here some kind of sublinear behavior uh, in this case here. Well, I, I have described a, a model that I and my colleague have proposed, but I'd like to also to present to, to finalize this presentation, I'd like to, to present a model proposed by Molinero and Turner that is basically a, some kind of phenomenological kind of, of, um, of a model. So uh, imagine that you have uh, this uh, two quantity here, L and N. L is the total length of the street, N is the population size. And as I have uh, discussed with you, with you in the beginning of the presentation, both of these two quantities depends on a linear metric here by this formula. And if I put together these two formula here, we can write that the total length, in fact, is scaled with n erased to the, this uh, ratio between the fractal dimension associated with the infrastructure, associated with the total length of the city, and the also the fractal dimension associated with the population distribution, okay? And the Molinero and Turner also argue is that the, the uh, amenities are along to the street, are attached to the street. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite reasonable to, to say that in fact, the number of amenities is proportional to the total length of the, of the, uh, of the street. So uh, the conclusion that Molinero have is that in fact, the infrastructure or the number of amenities, in fact, scale with n has this uh, exponent here that's given by this ratio between this true fractal dimension. And in fact, you can see here by this uh, image that uh, as I, I present you at the beginning, the ratio between this true fractal dimension is 0 0.8 to 6. That is approximately the same, the same value of the urban scaling, uh, or, or in fact, the same value of the uh, scaling exponent for the case of infrastructure variable. And this uh, graph here only to, to show that, that L in fact, uh, uh, scaling linearly with this quantity here, that means that in fact, this ratio here is a strong candidate to explain the scaling exponent of the urban scaling. Uh, to finalize here, I'd like to compare the model 
proposed by modern network tunnel with my model. And uh, remember that in the case of my model, I have uh, predict that the number of amenities depend on n, erased through gamma, where gamma is a parameter that governs the range of interaction between the people, and there's some kind of microscopic interpretation. And dp is the fractal dimension associated with the population. And if I compare these two quantities here, we can say that these two, two models is in fact equivalent when I consider when I consider that the probability of interaction between these two persons, I and G, depend on this quantity here. And in fact, this quantity here is strongly related with the, the shape or the total length of the street. That the, the conclusion here is that the shape of the street uh, interfere in the way that we will contact with the people. And consequently, the, the, the number of contact interfere in the, the, in the scaling that you have observed in the case of, of uh, urban phenomena. That means that the way the, the streets, the, the, the streets is a strong candidate, or the shape of the street is a strong candidate to be um, uh, the main point that govern the scales of, uh, of, of cities. Only to finalize the, the presentation, I'd like to, to say that uh, we are the communities of physicists and also geographers or, or other scientists. I'm trying to look for a new science of the cities and uh, to see what, in what stage we are in this uh, new science of the, of the of cities. Uh, I'd like to, to, to say to you that what, what is science? Science, in fact, is the, is the mix between empirical data and theory. In fact, when you have this cycle here, we have what we call science. Only empirical data is not science, okay? It's just a collection of number. Only theory is not science because it's just uh, some idea. It's not an uh, explanation for, the, for, for, for nature. The, the science is the, the mix, the cycle given by this empirical data and theory. And uh, that is the case, for example, the case of, of, of celestial mechanics that you have on last three stage uh, for the development of the science. For example, we have the Tycho Barrick age. That was the age that we collect a lot of data. You have a collection of numbers uh, and those numbers in fact represent the orbit of planets or something like that. And then you go to the Kepler age. The Kepler age, is the age that you organize the, 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 the data with the identification of some patterns. So you have the, 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 the identification of patterns has a mark of this age. And then finally, you have the Newton age of the celestial mechanics. That was the age that uh, you explain the, the phenomenon. And has a, this explanation, you can give some, um, explanation for the patterns observed and also to, 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 to explain the data that you, you, you measured and also other that data and predict the situation to measure other kinds of data that was not uh, measured yet. And what stage we are in the case of city? We already overtake the, the Tycho, Bar, um, Tycho Bar age because we already have a lot of data, we already have uh, a huge collection of data. We also already identified some patterns as the, the ones that I have present you in this presentation. The question that I'd like to finalize my presentation is, is possible to achieve the Newton age in the case of cities? That is the, the question that I'd like to finalize my presentation. And if you are interested in this kind of uh, approach to understand seed, please take a look on this, uh, this paper here. In this paper, I present the model. I described the model that I have presented here. And also this uh, paper, I also, I, my colleague also tried to, to compare the dynamic of individual city with the dynamic of the systems of cities and try to identify some patterns or some Similar similarities in global scaling. And uh, also this recently archive paper, I present some uh, synthetic review about the models that try to explain urban phenomena. 
that's is financial support. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Luis, again, for the opportunity to, 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 to talk. And if you are interested in other works that I have, please take a look at uh, this uh, web page that, you, that is, uh, the link is by this QR code. And thank you very much, Luis. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Abiano. Uh, I think it was a very interesting presentation. Uh, I actually have uh, lots of questions, but um, uh, before my questions, I, I want to check if uh, someone wants to, to make a question, because I saw, for example, Martin made a couple of comments. Do you want to maybe pick up one question, Martin, to, to start the discussion? Yeah, um, well, at the start, uh, I wanted to, I mean, it was, it's more of a question that, like, I think, or I, I don't recall the source, but I remember reading that uh, geological fissures tend to have fractal, tend to be fractal in nature. So, right. cities being built in, like, on the earth. Would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would a priori imply that they're going to be fractal nature too so not necessarily i'm not saying it's not part of the city building process but that would be like that would be my occam's razor explanation for the for, for the fractionality of, of of cities no so that's what i exactly. want to I agree, I agree i agree totally with you of course okay, so well, the, the, the city is restricted to the geo, geo, geographic of the city a uh, geographic of the of the of the parts that uh, he is uh, it is building of course yeah you're right Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Nice. And, oh, but yeah, but, oh, yeah, but that, that, that's not. But I mean, so like that. That then the tough question would be to to separate the sociological or or not sociological, but like the. I mean, I, I mean, I'm an economist, no? So I I I think in 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 in, in economics, but we do see similar behavior, not necessarily in in. In, in cities, no? So, I mean, the, here the key would be to disentangle this reason from other underlying, more sociological processes happening in the background, no? Which I think it's the point of the of the talk, and, and the, which I really enjoy. And there was a question related to figure four, but like very early on. And like when you talk, when you were talking about the exponents, um, I, I, it's, the second question is also on the chat, that um. I, I, I wanted to ask whether those exponents were related to some sort of tail thickness of what I assume to be pro, um, probability random variables. I'm sorry. So like I, that that was a question, no? But like out of context, it's hard to to, to ask it again. But it's yes. In in one in one picture, you you showed like like right. Yeah, I can I can show it to you again this image here. I think it's one here. Yes, but the, the question itself refers to figure four. I don't know if that's, I think it was a little bit before before that, but when you showed that picture, it answered my, my question, no? because I think you, you hadn't shown any power law figures up to that point, but when I saw that, then I, I assumed it was related indeed. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't, I'm not sure if you actually said it by, by name. Uh, uh, sorry, Martin, but I did not understand what what the image that you are refers to. I think it was before that one. I I wrote down related the question related to Figure Four, but I'm not sure which one is Figure Four. To be honest, Figure Four. Let yes, that one. Here. Yes. Uh, no, you you repress. It was where you have different different types of. Uh, go go one forward. What one more? Ah, I think you have different types of variables, and then you yes, you, and then, then you, you plot basically the exponent. Showed, yeah, yeah this that, one. That one. Yeah. Okay, right. Yes, yeah, that, that one caught my that one caught my 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 eye, no? Because I I also work a little bit I, I work a little bit with distributions, and and we tend to have a lot of power less in economics. Yeah. And, yeah. And and we they tend we, we tend to be focused on the around one. You're really close to one. From above, no, and and that yes. and that emerges from the underlying optimization uh, behavior of agents. 
Um, so I'm, I'm really, I was really just really interested if you had like some sort of intuition of what determines the, 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 the beta parameter here and whether, whether it is, whether if it is related to, to some sort of underlying process, no? The, the, so that, that was the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in fact, here is a, you have a lot of exceptions of these patterns here. You have uh, these uh, three categories, but uh, uh, we cannot say that is uh, the final, uh, the final idea about that. Because for example, you have very different exceptions here. Okay. For example, you have health facilities. Health facility, in my point of view, is an infrastructure kind of variable. Whatever you have here, a linear behavior, you have beta around one. Mm. So, okay, most of the, of the, or not most, but uh, 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 some, 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 um, some amount of, of uh, variables uh, that are individual need kind of variables have beta around one, but there's uh, strongly assumptions that maybe we need to explain better these uh, exceptions. Or, or maybe the, the exception means that you don't understand yet the, what happened here. Okay. Maybe this. So. Maybe we will never you understand because that, that is the question. That is the problem of uh, of uh, uh, of complex systems because we try to understand that by a single formula. That's the parallel formula, but there is a lot of things happen here. Maybe this a lot of things turn out to be relevant only parts of this uh, amount, huge amount of uh, variables, but I don't know, that is, that is the problem of complex system. That, that's, there's so many things acting together here that uh, maybe could be difficult to accept one single equation mm -hmm. to describe mm -hmm. this complexity, right? Uh, until now, this three category or if you consider the third category that we have proposed here, that mm. I told you that uh, some variables that are strongly related with public policies. So that's described a great part, a huge part of the variables, but, but not all. Okay. As I told you, there is uh, some exception, some important exception about that. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I've just thank you, moved a little bit because uh, we have some more questions and I am afraid of losing people because it's four, uh, it's five now. So, uh, yeah. Hitman, do you want to bring up your question or uh, you wrote in the chat? Or did we lost Hitman? Okay, so Arno, do you want to bring up your question? Uh, that you wrote in the chat. Ah, okay. Please, I cannot. I cannot see the chat. Uh, ah, I don't know. You can click how... on the on the on the bottom. There is a place written chat. Uh, okay, right. maybe I, I just see. asked the question. So Hena asked, can the social status between groups of individuals be considered a factor that could influence the probability of interaction between individuals? Is there yeah, good question. research that considers this factor in the mathematical modeling of the phenomenon? Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, in, the, in the review that I, I have told you in this review here, I present some, some model that consider precisely that, that observation. How the socioeconomic is, or how the social influence of the people uh, interfere in the, in the scale. In fact, when you have um, uh, influent people in the population, you increase the way that different groups uh, communicate. And uh, in fact, when you, promote communication between different groups, you increase the socioeconomic product or socioeconomic index of the city. And if you take a look at this paper, you can see precisely uh, the, the mathematical definition of this kind of model. And the answer is yes. When you have influential people or when you have, for example, socioeconomic 
separated uh, people with socioeconomic difference separate from the city, you decrease the number of contacts, you decrease the, the, the heterogeneity of the city and consequently you decrease the socioeconomic production. That is the, the, what the models discuss. And you can see in the tales in this uh, review paper here. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, and then Arno, do you want to bring up your question? Yeah. Or, can you yeah. hear me? Thank you. Yes, yes, we can. You can, you can write uh, Fabiano. Uh, yes, so I, uh, I read this work of uh, uh, West et al. about uh, biology or uh, cardiovascular uh, right. entities, and they explain this very well, this coefficient of tree fort uh by um ratios between volumes and surfaces within those uh, cardiovascular systems yeah, and yeah. i somewhat missed your point in the model of molinero and turner yeah. is it is your point that this model sufficiently explains this one point uh sorry this 15 percent or five, five over six coefficient for uh, cities, or is your point that it does not sufficiently do so, and that's why we need more work on this? Good, uh, thank for the question, very important question. Uh, the case of Mulinero Turner model explain the some same the, the scaling, but uh, by a phenomenological way. What I mean is phenomenological. Uh, uh, the model explained quantitatively, that is a, is a good model. Let me try to put here the Molinero models to uh, explain to you. Uh, but the problem is that is, uh, in the Molinero model, you don't have a microscopic um, explanation for that. What happened at the level of the individuals that make this formula here emerge? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Uh, in my opinion, Molinero model contributes a lot. This model contributes a lot for this understand because uh, they identify that in fact the beta could be explained by the geometrical properties of the city. Mm. Okay, but uh, that's explained in some part. But also bring other question is that is why appears this uh, coaching this ratio here? What the microscopic explanation for this ratio? What happened at the level of the individuals that uh, we come up with this ratio? That is the point. That uh, that is my uh, the question that I'd like to to answer in the, uh, with the compare comparison uh, with the comparison between these two models. That is not mm -hmm. done yet. In fact, I'm working on it. That is only the idea that I have that must be explored mm -hmm. in the in the next month. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay, hey, thank you. Uh, now, uh, Hafik has a nice question that is actually very similar to one I wanted to ask. Uh, but yeah. please, uh, Hafik, uh, feel free to, to bring up your question to Fabiana. Yes, uh, hello, you, you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, very nice presentation. So I, I am an urban climatologist. So it's more about uh, oh, good. Urban, uh, heat island, uh, uh, temperature, et cetera, in cities. So uh, I wanted just to, to say that you, you, I heard you say that uh, the, the, the shape of the street was a good candidate to represent cities. And I wanted just to tell you that this is what we are using for uh, as a concept for the, to represent a little bit the, the temperature, how we are basing the, parameterization on this aspect, on, on, the, on the shape of the street in order to uh, retrieve the temperature, humidity in the street canyon. So I wanted just to say this, right. that it's on what we are, we are using. And my question is more about, so I put it in the chat. Um, yeah, so we have these two types of cities. You have the compact cities and the sprawl cities, when you have city which is uh, uh, wide. So I was wondering if the fractal aspect is, is kept in both type of, of cities, and my second question is about uh, global warming. So you know that uh, yeah, in the future, we need to, to have resilient cities. Uh, we are from the urban climate tented a bit to go for the compact cities because uh, yeah, for aspect related to heat, et cetera. So uh, yep, yep. I was wondering if this go in line with, with, your, with your work and what, what do you think of this uh, from your perspective? 
Thank you very much. Yeah, good. Good. Have, uh, thank you very much for the, the question. And what uh, this uh, result suggests is that when you densificate the city, you put more people living together in the, in a, in a, in the, in a place, you increase the number of contacts of the people and consequently you have uh, uh, more production of uh, uh, a more socioeconomic production, okay? And that is, uh, is good in some sense because uh, of course we need a, uh, a, a more compact city in order to allocate all the superpopulation that we have. But it's, at the same time, you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, 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 not so good consequence. That is the increase of violence. You also increase the, the, the quality of life of the people. And that, that is the problem. In fact, the solution for the cities is uh, the compactation of that. But this is, is not, I think that we cannot avoid this fact for the future in terms of uh, climate change or something like that. That is a good for a, one aspect that you will increase the contacts of the people and consequently you will increase the health of the city. But uh, the, the, the bad aspect is that uh, you also increase the the, the violence and the effect of disease propagation, something like that. So, in my opinion, you don't, you cannot expect for the, this densification of the city, and you you must to 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 live together with these two aspects, one good aspect and the other bad aspect. It is impossible to to avoid that. And uh, sorry, I did not remember your first question. Can you please uh, repeat for me to get, uh, yes. uh, once again? Yes, thank you. It's about the fractal aspect. So, is it kept in both uh, in both type of cities, like the compact and, the, or uh, or you lose the fractal aspect in I don't know in compact cities uh, compared to sprawl cities or the other way. So, I was just wondering about the fractal aspect that you present. Is it in both? Uh, I mean, yeah. Okay. What what the models and the results suggest is that. In order to have a, a, to observe a, a fractal patterns, you must have a, a sufficiently large city. It's impossible to observe the same pattern in a small village, for example, because you, statistically you don't have uh, data enough to see if a, if a city is a fractal or not. Because remember, to be a fractal, you must to observe the same aspect in different scale. And it is impossible to see different scale in a village, for example. You have just one word of magnitude in the case of village. So uh, what the mod, what the, the results suggest is that uh, as you increase the size of the city, of the city, and consequently you have more scale to observe the same city. These patterns start to be more uh, evident, you know, more evident. And for example, in this formula here, you can see that this ratio here become to stabilize for cities greater than, for example, 100,000 people, something like that. But, but uh, for cities smaller than this value, this value is not so precise. So you cannot say nothing about that. So uh, I, I don't know if I answered the, the, uh, your question, but if I understand correctly, this fractal behavior of city only can be observed if you have a larger city. For, Smaller cities, you cannot, you can say nothing about that it's because you don't have uh, orders of magnitude to analyze yeah. the case of well, smaller cities. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Nice. Thank uh, you. Maybe I, I want to make a question that is related to this, uh, Fabiano. Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, biological systems are more efficient than, than social systems, let's say. To, to for self organization right to uh, that's yeah exactly that so to some extent there is a space for us to improve and to to make our cities more efficient following the same kind of uh, dynamics let's say uh, but then at the same time uh, what i understand is that uh, if you make connections, like if you allow mobility between the periphery of cities to, to the central parts, you also yeah. make it more efficient, right? Uh, yeah. 
but then it feels like what you're doing is basically you're concentrating more resources in the central part of the city to some extent. Uh, and, and this goes against what I thought uh, would be a good solution that was a more decentralized organization yep. in a city, yep. like yep. small uh, central areas for shopping, schools, and this kind of things. Uh, but, uh, but, but I mean, maybe the difference between what I thought was right and what you are showing, I mean, one potential difference is that in, in these models that you show it, you talk about the length of streets, but you don't talk about the width of streets, right? All right. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, basically you have a lot of congestion uh, if you concentrate a lot of people in the central areas, you have more pollution, uh, traffic jams and all these sorts of problems. Yeah. And, and, and in, the, in the biological systems, at least those you show with us, they are organized in a way that you have these central uh, wide uh, channels for, for blood flow, for example, and in the periphery, they get thinner and thinner. Uh, so my, my point, my question is, uh, do you think this, uh, two things, I mean, there is a space to improve our cities uh, yep. if we take it into account, and then the second point is, what about the width of, uh, of these streets? It's not counted, right? Uh, would it change a bit or how, how do you see that? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, good, very first question, Luis. And uh, the first uh, thing that comes to my mind is the joke that I, I, I say to my students is that uh, uh, maybe bio biology is uh, more efficient because Biology uh, is there for more than seven billions of years, you know? <laughs> and the cities have uh, have only maybe ten thousand years or something like that. So maybe we don't have time enough to to have twenty five percent of the scale economy. Okay. But uh, yeah, maybe in seven billions of years ahead, maybe we we'll, we we'll have this uh, efficient that we have in biology. That is the easier way to answer this question, but of course, I, I don't agree that this is the, the, the answer, precise answer, because maybe biological system is a completely different system from the cities. That is a, maybe, I, I, I must confess that that is what I believe, that the biology is one thing and cities are other things. That is expressed mm -hmm. by this formula here. You have quantitatively numbers saying that uh, these two systems are different. Maybe it's okay. different because of the time of the evolution, but I don't believe of that. Yeah. Can no, I briefly second... comment? Oh, sorry. Yeah, please, yeah. please. Can I briefly Thank comment? You. My understanding yeah. from West is that biological systems have this high ratio because they are three-dimensional. So mm. they have a central organization, in this case, the heart, and the yeah. distribution goes into three dimensions, while for cities, yeah. it's only in two, and so, the efficiency cannot can never be as large as for a three-dimensional system where you have a ratio yep. between surfaces and volumes. Mm. So exactly. three-dimensional that, cities what... would be an improvement, yep. I guess. Okay, but, yep. but, yep. but then it, it should maybe consider, uh, be, okay, because the same, but, the first, but, well, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah please, 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 please. No, no, ju just go ahead. I was uh, going to trick a bit. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 Sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't see who is uh, this, this comment is, was. Uh, I think was Arno. Sorry, Arno. Was Arno? Yeah. Arno I, I, yes, I, you I see me now. Yeah. With, sorry, Arno. I agree completely with you, but uh, you agree that this explanation concentrate that uh, explain this difference only by the the dimension that the things happen, and I think that there's more than that. It's sure, not there's only certainly because more. Yeah. The, yeah, it's yeah. more than that. It's not about the, the three-dimensional. Of course, it's part of the explanation. And it's with, part of the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of the, of the problem, but I think there's other things more that is different in cities that, that also is different from biology. 
Sure, mm -hmm. I certainly mm -hmm. agree, yes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, ju just to complement, because I was thinking if it's possible to design cities, and I mean, people do this all the time, where you take into account that, I mean, if the flow of people is a key aspect, you would have a very large uh, avenues in the central part of the cities. Uh, and, and then this would just be organized in a, like in, in a way that you, you try to optimize uh, how, how people move around. Uh, maybe no bigger uh, buildings or bigger schools in the central parts, I don't know. Uh, actually, it could actually be a question. I mean, do, are you aware that people take these kind of results into account to possibly simulate uh, a city and uh, the behavior of a city? Yeah. yeah. But, but, yeah, good. Uh, I, I'm not aware about this uh, this the, this kind of research. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. What I'm, I'm, I believe is that, um, uh, in fact, I don't I, I, I don't remember to see any works that uh, bring this information about the wide of the street as a fundamental uh, component. I, I remember that uh, Bittencourt paper of 2030. I remember that uh, uh, here I grew something about this, some this kind of hierarchical structure of the streets. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if uh, he uh, discussed about this the wide of the, of the street. Uh, the, I, don't, I don't know. I, 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 I can try to, to take a look at this information. But, but I think that is a very interesting uh, point, Luis, that you mm -hmm. point out. The, the, the white of the street, not only the, the length of the street. Mm. Okay, okay, thanks. I, I want to jump in and just to, to, to complement this point and, and say that, that, that indeed, I think there are underlying processes that are, that are very, very, very interesting. And, and I, I want to point out that they have been somewhat explored within the social sciences, but I mean, using uh, uh, like other toolkits, no? And I think uh, yeah. it's, it's interesting to know that we've arrived at, um, I mean, at somewhat similar conclusions, no? M more, I mean, like the example I gave, the size distribution of of firms following a, a power line being somewhat fractured, uh, fractured yeah, nature, yeah. I think that's that's somewhat a somewhat surprising result, no? That emerges from 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 the individual behavior. Of, of 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 the economic agent, and it yeah, has yeah. and that individual behavior has very very important and interesting um, results or, or 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 implication for the for the macro for, for the macro picture for the macro All right yeah, yeah. for mm -hmm. the macro image, and I also wanted to point out that there are very strong parallelisms between biology and, and the social sciences, or or more specifically economics, and there's strong evidence that biological systems at least obey or, or follow some of the predictions of, of microeconomic theory. No? So I think those are very, yep. very similar in some sense. Yes. Potential and, similar. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and very potential avenues for future research to, to, to explore. No? That because on, on, on a side you lack, on both sides you lack, you lack, you lack certain, of, certain parts of the toolkit that are necessary to comprehend the whole picture. No? So just pointing out that the parallelisms between the two between yep, the, yep, yep. those two disciplines are very strong. And that's okay. it. Thank you very much for the amazing presentation. Okay. So, thank, thank you, Matthew. Uh, maybe are there any more questions uh, from the audience? So okay, if not. Uh, I, I just want to thank, uh, thank uh, Fabiano for the presentation again. It was a pleasure to have you here. Uh, hopefully next time you can even visit us uh, on campus. Uh, and thanks everybody for the, for the participation, the survivors to the end.